Hi everyone, welcome to Mentoring Developers. This is a podcast and this is a YouTube show for you. If you are a new developer, if you want to be a developer, or you just want to help out new developers, you're in the right place. Today, my guest is Kevin Schwartz. Kevin is a new developer, but he has a very interesting sort of story, how he got started, something to do with comics and his interest in comics and other family members helping out kind of stumbled onto this whole software thing. So let's talk to him and find out. Hi, Kevin. Hey, how's it going? Pretty good. So what's the story with these comics? <laughs> so um, you know, when I was really young, like a, I would say a like kindergarten or so, just, I'm about 27 now, so uh, my, uh, I, I essentially, I, I would draw comics with my brothers. We really got into art and illustrating and stuff like that. At the time, I didn't really realize that my dad had a, a room full of computers and he just kind of hooked him up. He would kind of help us, like he would set up us uh, playing like Doom together and stuff like that, and it was really cool. And um, but what I didn't realize is he was actually one of the first like entrepreneurs we were getting into the web world. So he um, he really inspired me. He's really the kind of the root for you know where I am today and so, stuff. Um, getting to the point, I just essentially when we were drawing and writing all these comics down and stuff like that, one day he was just like, do you want me to put these online? And I was just kind of like, what? Like, <laughs> like, what do you mean? Like, like have my own website? And he's just like, yeah. So I, so we started doing that. And honestly, it just, I just thought it was so cool. The ability to be able to just kind of portray all that media out there and art and just for other people to kind of absorb it. Um, from there, I was really kind of like interested in web development and how he created that website and so on and so forth. So. Okay, so does your dad actually teach you programming or how to make things? Or was it just an initial inspiration? He uh, he taught me some basic HTML and CSS and stuff like that. Um, from there, I kind of took it myself. I actually... Well, in high school, I took a, a half-day media program. It's called ITA Media, uh, where we learned all like the all the basic Adobe programs, like Photoshop and stuff like that. Uh, can you see me? Yep. Sorry, my screen was messing up for a sec. Um, but from there, I learned the basic HTML officially, and then kind of carried that knowledge forth to some more like kind of like personal projects with gaming. Um, I used to play, they're called private servers. They're essentially just like off uh, video games that people create their own instances. People need to advertise them and need to have a website for them where people can access the forums and stuff like that. So I would do a lot of digital art for them and uh, just kind of create like a very basic website HTML template. And that's where I really started getting into coding. It was actually, well, you know, I first started learning a little bit of HTML and CSS with uh, MySpace. I think a lot of people are actually that in my age group, um, you know, where you can kind of customize your widgets mm -hmm. and, mm -hmm. and everything like that. But my space is um, a lot of people got into uh, weird CSS and HTML and colors and scrolling, scrolling text and blinking things. Yeah, I think a lot of people got their start at my space, but yeah. but a lot of people just end there, right? They play around and move on. But you decided that this is going to be your career that happened recently so take us a little take us back a little bit you went to college mm -hmm. you, we went to the ohio state university you didn't study programming you didn't study computer science you're studying new media mm -hmm. so at that point you weren't sure that you wanted to get into software yeah really at that point i I wasn't entirely sure what it is I wanted to do. I, I knew I like I liked computers, I liked gaming, I liked art, I liked design. I kind of just like I liked a lot of little pieces and parts. So it was kind of hard. Uh, so I kind of just went for a more general degree, as mm -hmm. you know, as you say. Um, I ended up interning for this place called Web Presented. Um, I started there actually, since I knew enough like HTML and CSS, I started doing like some very basic front end development there. 
Mm -hmm. And I ended up really liking it. I, I thought it was awesome. It wasn't exactly legit and official. I think it was more, it was kind of like styling with jQuery on top of this e-commerce platform that was super old and built in only tables and <laughs> super nested tables. It was very messy. It, you know, it wasn't the typical developer experience, but from that point, I, you know, when I handed off a deliverable or two, I just, I felt really satisfied. I, I liked good, it a lot. Right? Yeah. yeah. And it, by the way, the, the whole table based layouts, you might think that those are not legit. That's how we did everything Yeah, that, until yeah, recently. The... And uh, I wouldn't call it not legit. Those are legitimate HTML. It's just that over the years, the industry has learned that mm, there's a pretty rigid way of doing things. And what ends up happening when you use tables for layouts is that it, it doesn't change based on the type of device you're using. And it becomes very... Very strange. However, using tables is a very convenient way of doing it, so I wouldn't discount that. That's a good right. experience to have <laughs> because um, when you're building a website from code and you don't know what you're doing, you're a developer, not a designer, you don't really have a design eye, but you can count columns. So, But that's good. You started there. It wasn't perfect. Mm -hmm. The technologies weren't that new, and but you still, you made something out of nothing yeah. that yeah. made you feel good. Yeah. But then, what were you getting paid for that? I was. I was. Um, yeah, it was. I mean, I, I really liked, I, I think from that point, I really discovered that I liked a little bit of tech, a little bit of code. But I also really like design and user interface and user mm -hmm. experience. And so that's just kind of like, I really decided at that moment, I was kind of researching like what exactly I wanted to do. And I was looking up front end development and I was like, I think this is it. Like, I think this is, it has a little bit of everything and mm -hmm. it just kind of puts it all into one. And so that's kind of what really got my fire going with it. Um, unfortunately, with the company I was with, we had a, a CRM company. Or they they're they're still they still exist today. They have a CRM company that integrates with wholesale uh, distribution websites, and they pull in analytical data from their ERP systems and all stuff like that. It's pretty cool. But the commerce side and the styling, they actually dropped that part of their business. So unfortunately, I kind of landed out of that, and uh, I still was working with them because I was still in school at the time, and I, I just I needed to have some kind of income or money. So I kind of fell into a support position. Mm -hmm. um, so I ended up running support for them for, I think it was a total of about three years. I worked for them about four years, four or five years total. <clears throat> but yeah, it, you know, it just wasn't what I wanted to do. Um, so at the time I was, uh, a friend of a friend referred me to Kevin Mack, which I know you've had him on your episodes a few times. I know you're good friends with him. Yeah. Um, awesome guy, by the way, <laughs> very helpful. Uh, he, he was helping run, or I don't know if he actually really founded the Columbus web group. So it was kind of a local, uh, group that they posted on meetup to essentially gather people together and just have all kinds of, uh, you know, individuals come in to talk about their businesses, what they were doing, what, uh, as well as kind of integrating a lot of tech into it. So from that point, um, I was like, all right, well, I'm going to, I'm going to check these out. You know, I've got nothing to lose at this point. I'm in a job where it's kind of just, you know, it's a startup, it's support, it's getting very like, you know, hard. I'm just going to do whatever I can to try and see what other opportunities are out there. So I started going there. Um, they uh, eventually were offering weekend workshops and all their weekend workshops are actually available online on YouTube, which is great. Some of them are really awesome, but it would be something simple like getting the, uh, like for instance, we did a, a react workshop where we kind of just teach you how to do a quick, um, hello world react project, except they make it a little bit more, um, uh, in depth too. So I think what we did was like a, I can't remember exactly what it was. It was something with pictures. Um, but yeah, so that is kind of, you know, kind of getting me more interested in, in that regard. Um, I met someone uh, named Vitaly, which is uh, now one of my coworkers, actually, but through 
uh, Columbus web group. And I was kind of just talking to him cause he very much was similar to me where, he, you know, he just didn't go to like a university and get a, a total education for computer science and stuff like that. And he was like, I've got this great course online, you know, that I took and it really just kind of solidified my foundation for just beginning websites. And it was on Udemy. It was, uh, by Colt Steele. Yeah. Colt Steele. And it was just like a basic, like uh, web developer bootcamp. And you know, at the time we, I was working at a, an incubator kind of area and right next to us was, um, Oh, what is it called? The one in Columbus. That's big. The name's evading me, but it's a big, uh, it's a larger boot camp that's here in Columbus that I have personally known a lot of people that have gone through it and I've gotten some good jobs from there. But I was like, I just don't have the money. You know, I just spent all this money at OSU. It's like, you know, I'm on my own. It's like, I, you know, I'm not really getting any funding from parents and stuff like that. So I was like, all right, I'm just going to try and do this on my own. And I really appreciate Kevin Mack because he was one of the individuals that just told me, he's like, you don't have to go get an official degree in order to pursue this field, you have to just learn, you know, you have to learn it and you have to know it and you have to prove that you know it. And so from there, I started doing that web developer bootcamp, uh, kind of dividing my, you know, I actually really just kind of doing it after hours of working a full-time job and eventually got through that. Um, you know, it definitely took some time and a lot of patience, um, you know, a lot of free time, you know, mm -hmm. especially, you know, my age, you know, you kind of want to go out and go have a drink with a friend or something like that. But sometimes you just have to say no and have faith that, you know, a path will lead you to where you want to go. Right. So you're not that young, you're not that old, you're kind of in the middle phase of your life. Oh, yeah. <laughs> of your, uh, you're not really, you're, you're young, but from a, from a learning point of view, getting into an industry point of view, you're not 20, but you're not 40, you're 27, right, right in the middle. It's a good mm -hmm. time to invest in yourself because if imagine if you were instead of 27 if you were 35 right then it becomes harder so 27 is a good good age uh, and my advice to everybody out there who is in their 20s they're they have a lot of things they want to do and i wanted when i was in my 20s i made a lot of mistakes as well i didn't focus as much on my personal career development i was too concerned mm -hmm. with a lot of other things but now I, I realize that if I had paid more attention to building my my career, my skill set at that time, then I wouldn't have to do that now so much. So well, for me, in my 30s, I realized that I have to spend a lot of effort, focused effort, to catch up to what I could have been, what I could have done. And I was lucky enough that I was able to do that. But you don't have to. If you're if you're 25, you're 22, even if you're 16, start start learning, start building up your skills, especially in something if you're if you're passionate about it. So that's pretty good, and and so you don't have a degree. A lot of people that I speak to, they have this misconception that you need someone to tell you you're allowed to work as a software developer either you get a degree in computer science or you go to a boot camp or some kind of certification you need something otherwise who would hire you no yeah. people will hire you well i've, I've got a degree the work. it's just saying it's in communication it's not even you know it's communication new media technology with a minor design it doesn't really equate to computer science but yeah and but the good thing about bringing your knowledge from other areas into software development is that you bring your unique perspective. Someone like me, I only studied computer science and computer engineering. That's all I did, right? I, yes, I, I took other classes and yes, I did a lot of other cool stuff as well, but my major has always been computer related. So I don't really know anything about communication from an academic point of view. And so you bring with you this ability to see things in a different way because you you have done that. So that's an asset if you yeah. deploy it as an asset. So Definitely. there is a communication company out there that is looking to build some software. Or if you're working for a company who's building a software for a communication company in communications, 
then you will bring the domain knowledge that I will never be able to do. So there's, you can actually use that to your advantage. Yeah. Yeah. But again, right now you need to build your skills. So you're, you have started doing internships and now you, you're working for projects. Um, you're working with Kevin, Kevin Mack, but you're also doing other side projects, whatever you can find, because this is a time you you have dedicated. My impression is that you have dedicated yourself and you're saying for the next year or so, I'm going to build up my skills, build my resume and then, and then see where, you know, what opportunities you have. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. For me, it was, uh, the biggest turning point was when I started setting the goals, like the concrete goals. So my first goal was to get through that boot camp, um, you know, while still being able to sustain with a full-time job. So I did that. And then I was like, all right, well, what's next? Um, I was looking for apprenticeship opportunities and, uh, trying to figure out if I could maybe, you know, get, you know, the biggest, uh, issue was being able to self-sustain while learning like that. And, you know, there are companies out there mm -hmm. that pay, you know, you can do like an apprenticeship. So, uh, essentially what I, what I did was I actually, uh, I tried to apprentice with a uh, spark box and unfortunately I didn't make it. It was my first time applying, which, so I wasn't being too hard on myself or anything like that. But I think they gave me, um, they kind of invited everyone back who didn't make it, which was really awesome. And they kind of sat us all down and they were just like, well, what do you guys want to do? Like what, like we're going to try and do what we can to help you get to where you want to be. And I think the biggest thing that I was missing out on was, uh, kind of like that concrete proof of like my knowledge and what I was learning. So the biggest thing that I learned from them that I really liked was uh, to start a blog. And they were like, mm -hmm. it doesn't have to be a crazy good blog. It doesn't have to be anything. It could literally just be all put on GitHub and just like put, you know, simple like readme files. Like it just as long as you've got some kind of documentation that you're trying, you're learning, um, you know, that works. So I did that and I got that information out there, uh, started a little blog. I was I designed a little app that I was going to start working with. And, um, yeah, so I started, you know, kind of designing and doing that. Um, unfortunately the, the thing is I kind of fell out of it. I kind of like lost hope in a sense, um, because it's, you know, it's, it's, it's hard, <laughs> you know, it's yes. hard when you, when you're, when you're giving up your social life for that stuff. And, um, my current, my work, uh, life wasn't so great either. So I kind of hit a point where I, I just hit a wall where I was like, I just kind of need to get out of here. I need a new mm. fresh face. I need to do something. So I kind of took like a, like an interim job per se. Um, and I was working for quantum health and essentially I was just a care coordinator. And they, what they do is they're pretty much like the phone number that you call on the back of the insurance cards and you answer questions, you do medical management, you do stuff like that. And, you know, it wasn't like the most ideal job. Um, it was a pay cut, but honestly, in exchange for like my sanity and kind of getting everything back together, it was great. And I did what I needed it to do. My thought was I would go into that company and then maybe try and, because I hadn't really worked in a corporate environment before was to try and get into that company, then maybe just try and like slowly work my way up. And so what I ended up doing is I got, a, I kind of made a deal with them and they were like, uh, they're considering full time to be 30 hours. And so I was like, well, if I could do 30 hours a week and then spend the rest of the time learning whatever you guys want me to do to try and get there, uh, then I'll do it. And they had at the time a Salesforce position open up uh, as just a Salesforce admin. And so I was trying to get uh, essentially my Salesforce administration certification. And I had changed my hours up and done everything. And I was getting ready to do that. And then all of a sudden, you know, Kevin Matt calls me. <laughs> and then I was actually, Kevin! yeah, <laughs> no, it was great though. I mean, I, I was literally uh, boarding a plane uh, to go to Colorado for a friend's wedding. So it was kind of nice. I was kind of like relaxing my head a little bit and not thinking so much about work. And he was just like, I got so many projects that I need help with right now. And he's like, I think you'd be great to help me out with them. And I was like, okay, I'll, I'll think about it. So I, you know, kind of during the whole vacation, I'm just kind of stirring in my mind. I'm like, 
this is a huge leap. It's like either I kind of like drop my my insurance, I drop everything. And at the time, I, I should say, I just bought this house. So I was very new with that too, like more responsibility. But I will oh, say by buying... Empathy hat. Yeah. <laughs> we need that right now. By, uh, by buying this house, I actually kind of, you know, I wasn't renting anymore. And so my mortgage was actually cheaper than renting. And I also have my partner and my brother living with me. So my day-to-day costs ended up being less. So it kind of just fell into this, like, uh, are you still with me? I'm still here. Can you, I can hear you. You can okay. hear me. Yeah. Sorry. The, your videos, uh, kind of wonky right now. That's all right. <laughs> <laughs> um, Oh, the probably somebody's watching a lot of movies today, huh? No. <laughs> but, but it's, it's fine here. Go for it. Okay, so cool. Yeah. Uh, so I kind of found myself with this predicament of just like, drop everything and just kind of go on a whim and just try and see what this opportunity has a leap of faith. Yeah. And, and so I, you know, I, I thankfully had a whole vacation ahead of me to think about it. And so I did that. So I, I essentially, I put in my two weeks. Um, I still kept good connections with them because they were like, you know, obviously if something, if I needed a, a quick job, they would just hire me back. That's wonderful. Um, but yeah, always, always keep your, your uh, ties open and clear. Yeah. Never great cut. advice. Mm-hmm. And and this happens a lot, by the way. If if you're thinking that if you left a job, you could never go back. No, it happens all the time because people understand that mm-hmm. people need to move on sometimes and they go back. It happens again and again. And But let me just put in a little, <laughs> a little tip. So what happens is I've seen a lot of times you are not able to progress in your career faster like you may be not able to get a promotion because for whatever reason it's not happening there's a lot of competition you leave you and go to another company you work there for a little bit and then you go back you go through the interview process again and oftentimes you get hired at the higher position you wanted mm-hmm. just a tip yeah yeah <laughs> so go for it that's great advice for yeah. sure yeah um so I mean, so yeah, so essentially I pretty much had quit working at Quantum. And uh, at that point, I had maybe about a week lull between uh, getting a project with Kevin. And so I really just spent that time and treated it just like work. I set up a time schedule of just like, all right, from this time to this time, I'm going to learn this. And I just made sure I had structure and something to do every day. Um, Because I think that's really important, especially when you're like working at home and working like by yourself. It's just like it's so easy to get distracted. But if you kind of really keep yourself to that kind of structured, uh, you know, just like as if you were to have like a a real job, (laughs) Mm -hmm. Um, not saying it's not a real job, but you know what I mean. So, yeah, so I've, you know, I've only been working uh, with his for, I would say, with Kevin Mack on some of his projects for about three months now. Um, and then he's got his company vibe. Uh, he co-owns with, uh, two other guys, uh, Drew and Ryan. And essentially he was like, well, you, you know, we've got some deadlines coming up and we need some help with that. And he's like, I think it'd be great to have you at least step in and just kind of see what you can do. So I was able to kind of work with them and, um, they've been, great i mean they've been awesome it's it's really nice to work with a company that just truly sees that you're eager to work and values you and that uh, like appreciates the work that you do um because i would say there's you know companies in the past i've worked with that just don't really give you that uh that feedback i guess you know even if you're doing bad you want to know you're doing bad so that way you can get better so on and so forth and not at the end of the year which is very common where you don't hear any kind of feedback until it's review time. And yeah. At that time, they say, oh, by the way, we're not entirely happy with you. But we didn't right. say anything <laughs> until, yeah. until because we didn't want to. So this happens. So let me tell you a little behind the scenes why this happens. Because everybody is an employee, right? Nobody is sitting around. It's extra work for somebody. So if I'm your manager and I have to evaluate you as work, that really rather not do i'd rather just do my job and then go home to my family and so if i have to put in this extra hour we kind of 
we don't want to do it. And so we only do it when we have to. And then we're like, okay, then we ask around and people who are, who may have some, some feedback for you at that time, we get the feedback really totally wrong. It should be a very, very open system. If you want your new software developers to grow fast with you, just a tip for managers. Yeah, definitely. Right. Yeah, listen up, managers. <laughs> yeah. So, so do you regret it? Is it's been like it's a crazy thing in this day and age, in this pandemic? Because three months—that means this was during this pandemic—that you were, you had a job where you would get health insurance, and Salesforce admin is not exciting, but it pays well. Mm -hmm. You gave that up to go to a startup company with the, the turmoil of startup world. Yeah. You made the right decision, I think. And that's because I know Kevin. And I know that if you, what I've discovered is people who associate themselves with great mentors, they go very far, very fast. And people who, who don't do that, who go for a kind of a safety first approach, or maybe they didn't have this opportunity, they it, it it's harder it's harder to know what the right thing to learn is and also to make connections so i think you made the right call but but after three months what do you think i feel the happiest i think i've ever felt to be quite honest i mean waking up every day and just knowing that i'm doing what it is i've been trying to do for years it's it's it that feeling alone is worth it um i know like the money isn't amazing right now but i'm able to get by and i'm able to pay for what i need and live comfortably so that's i mean to me that's what's worth it is to be happy with the job and to be happy with right. that and as you know if you are working in this part of the world in the us and in some parts of europe there is no such thing as job security so what happens when a company decides that they need to downsize, they can ask you to leave without any cause. You may mm -hmm. not have done anything wrong, but they may not want to have you and they don't need to give you a reason for that. So don't be so attached to a company. I think you did the right thing, but you need a plan. You need a path forward. You need to say, Okay, I'm going to do it for this amount of time, then I'm going to do that, which could be within the same company or somewhere else. I mean, there are so many options. Sometimes that's kind of, it's intimidating because you can do literally anything right now because you're just starting out. Yeah. Have you made that plan? Um, I would say it's a work in progress. Definitely. Um, I, I would say the biggest uh, thing I'm working on right now is learning React. Um, it's I with that bootcamp class. I you know I did a little bit of Node JS and we used Express Framework, um, which you know I know a whole. It doesn't seem like that's being used a whole lot with companies, but oh, at least with, used. Oh yeah, Trust okay, me. okay. Well, that's good. That's good to know. <laughs> um, with React, I you know I I know you know started with Facebook and then it became more of a, a, a solo dependent project, but it's, uh, you know, it's, it's just like a whole, it's a, it's a new level. I would say, I feel like I've like leveled up with my coding in oh, that yeah. sense. Now react, as you know, people who are, who have been listening to this podcast, they know that react is a very good framework to be known for. I'm not saying that, Everybody should learn React. But if you're known as a React expert, you are in good shape in 2020, 2021. This is a good set of technology to get your hand on, hands on. And, and simply because a lot of people, a lot of companies would like to use that, but there's not enough people to do it. Just simple as that. Hmm. And by the way, Salesforce, I, I did Salesforce for a few years. Yeah. It's, it's not exciting. <laughs> but there's a lot of money in it and yeah. there's still a lot of demand and very little supply. So yeah. if you find yourself in a place where you could get a Salesforce job, 
don't overlook it because it's not exciting. It may be a good stepping stone for you. It may be a good career for you. You never know. So yeah. just because Kevin decided to <laughs> to leave, you know, it may not be the same decision you want to make. So Yeah. My uh my father actually got into Salesforce eventually with his wow. company. He works for Chemical Abstract Society. So he does uh he's going the architect route. Um what I like so much about Salesforce is mm -hmm. just that all their materials online and free to yeah. learn. And that's, I mean, that's huge. Absolutely. And it's also very, it's easy to read. It's really easy to understand good stuff. Yeah. The, the, the reason Salesforce works is because there are so many things that are settled. You know, the language that you are going to use. It's the language that they have decided. The framework that you're going to use to build your application is already decided. How you are going to access the database is decided. Where you're going to host your website is decided for you. Mm -hmm. A lot of these difficult decisions have been taken yeah. already for you, which limits what you can do, which is what makes it not exciting, but it also makes it easy to do things yeah. and easy to get started. So, and and a lot of people would would rather do Salesforce because when you're when you get a a junior position in Salesforce, you may make a lot more money than a junior position, say Ruby on Rails. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. so you are working, you are learning, you're learning a little bit of design because you're interested in that. You're learning React, which is great. React is limited to the view layer, so there's other things you need. So for that, in the, in your project, you're using Express, am I right? Uh, for my personal project. For yeah. your personal project. So Express is a framework that's used on top of Node, which is another framework. So so Node is a JavaScript framework for people who don't know. And Express is a way to write, to make websites or any kind of services to serve up content to the world. And then what it looks like what this what this thing is doing in your personal project is throwing up react pages and react is a way to, to have this fluid interactive user interface where, where it seems to happen very fast. And it takes care of a lot of things that used to require full page refreshes. So you don't have to do that. So it just looks very slick, but you still have, you need to communicate with, whatever is holding your information, your data, right? So, so then that comes to express and then node. And then if you're saving this information, if you're, if you have a database, then you need to worry about that. So that completes the full stack as we say. So did you touch any databases? I have not really gotten to the database workings yet. Um, I worked with databases a little bit back when I was running support with what presented. Um, I just did like uh, Microsoft SQL, right? but it is just very basic queries and stuff like that. But sure. yeah, you don't need to do something just, just for the heck of it, but for your sample application, are you, do you have a backend, uh, a way to store data or is it just showing some information and nothing, so, it's not interactive. Yeah. So it uses Mongo. Uh, Mongo. MongoDB, okay. yeah, because that's what we I learned through the. Uh, oh, Mongo is great. Camera. No, don't, you don't need to feel bad about using Mongo. Some of the largest companies in the world use Mongo. Now, oh. Mongo database, for people who don't know, is a what we call a NoSQL database, which means that it is not relational. There are no tables in the traditional sense, and you don't have these kind of relationships back and forth. It's not rigid. It's kind of open. And it uses kind of a key value store kind of deal where you can store documents or you can store, uh, I believe it's BSON or JSON. JSON, yeah. Um, some kind of not notation. It doesn't matter what it is. This is just syntax. But mm. a, a notation where you have, you can store any piece of information and the relationships between those pieces of information may not be enforced in a way that will be done in a relational database like Oracle or SQL Server and so on, or Postgres. So that's 
that's kind of what that is. But the beauty of using that, because the relations are not enforced, what that means is that the database server doesn't have to figure out a lot. It's just if you give it stuff, it'll shove it, right? And if you want it, it will give it back to you very fast because it doesn't have to do a lot. And that's the promise of these kind of kinds of NoSQL databases. And I think they're fantastic, especially in in this world where you need fast response times and you have these kind of response, not responsive that going into a responsive applications, responsive web applications are a whole different thing, but I'm talking about a responsive user interface, whether it's a mobile app or whether it's a, it's a web app. It's really good to be able to get this data in and out quickly because a lot, in a lot of cases it works, but for enterprise applications where if you if your data needs to have that integrity you you want to make sure if you're a bank and you're saving people's you know, personal information or if you're saving people's you know account information how much money they have and so on you might want to have that in a relational database to make sure that the data is um it has all of those what we call acid properties. Anyway, longer discussion. But I just wanted people to have this taste of what it is. So there's choices to be made. And I'm really happy that you're doing your personal project and you're sharing it with the people, right? You have a website, probably just GitHub pages. Mm -hmm. Yeah, just GitHub pages. Yeah. And which is fantastic. The idea is that if I'm a recruiter, and I hear about you, whether you send me a resume or I found you somewhere, then I want to know, info, I, I want to know things about you. So I will Google you. Then I should be able to find you and I should be able to find information. Then I can compile this information and pass it on to the hiring manager because recruiters are not technical, but hiring managers are. So they can say, oh, I found all this information about this candidate. So then they have something to work with. Right. And I think this is why PS Sparkbox, um, I'm good friends with people at Sparkbox. They uh, profiled them on this, on this channel before, and they're doing a fantastic job with their apprenticeship. But this is why they ask you put something out there so people can find you, whether it's pretty or not, because when it comes to Google, it, it doesn't matter. Presentation is not that important. Well, this is great. Now, you are just starting out, and I think we're going to have to bring you back when you have spent a few more months so you can talk about, you know, the struggles that you have, you would have faced. So right now you're just starting out. It's a honeymoon phase. Yep. <laughs> it's going to get hard. Yep. So I think that we're going to have to get you back. But uh, for now, let us know if you have any questions. Do you have any questions for me? Do you have any qu questions for the audience or anything else you want to say? Um, I don't, I mean, nothing really comes to mind right now, but I just, yeah, I, uh, I, I just recently kind of discovered your podcast well through Kevin, but I, I need to go back and watch some. So <laughs> you should. this YouTube channel is very new. And we're still experimenting with layouts. And so from one episode to the other, it looks different. And sometimes the video doesn't look very good. We're working on it. But the podcast has been around since 2015. And nice. so if you go to iTunes, you look for mentoring developers. And you should be able to find the podcast. And I think it's it's helped a lot of people over the years. So it might help you too. Definitely. Um, and anybody who is who has any questions who's listening or watching right now, they can ask me a question. They can ask Kevin a question. Send me an email at us at mentoringdevelopers.com. You can see a, a ticker. Um, and then you can also tweet at mentoring devs. I think I prefer emails because they're more personal. And then we could then answer your questions. Or if you want to be part of this show, you want to be a guest, then be my guest and send me an email. All right, Kevin. It's been a pleasure. 
Thank you. It's been awesome. Awesome. All right. We'll see you guys later. See you.